computers. It is uh, 534 by my computer. Welcome. I'm Sarah Northrup, chairing the hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals tonight. Um, we have the board, Elizabeth Silver, Maureen Scan Scanlon, and Bob Riddle. And our staff provided tonight with our planning department director, Carolyn Mish. Um, this meeting is being video recorded. Um, we'll start by opening the public meeting for on any topic that's not on the agenda. I'd like to have a, a chance for folks if they just need to bring up a topic. Um, if so, please state your name and address for the record. I don't see any hands up. I don't see any either. All right. All right, I'm going to move on by opening um, the continuation. Well, wait a minute. Um, we were talking about continuing without opening uh, a hearing on an appeal by Richard Watling on appeal of the building commissioner's decision regarding a structure at 129 Riverbank Road. Um, I, I believe we've been, it's been requested that we continue that. Do we need to dis discuss that? Continuation. Um, I can describe the request. Please. I mean, just sort of bring the board up to speed on what's um, happened. This, you know, came in in June. Originally, there was a request for continuation without opening. Um, I think to the end of the summer. I believe it was August, and then to um, the end of October, there was another thirty-day request because there was a. Um, there has been an attempt by the appellant to um, negotiate a land um, strip of acquisition of land from the abutter. And so you have another request on the table, actually a longer request for um, continuation without opening. So you haven't heard taken any comment yet on this. And the request is, um, to continue till July of next, so next summer, because of financial um, mortgage um, loan complications or um, a, a refusal to release from the mortgage for this transaction to take place until 12 months after the property owner has um, been on the property and been making payments. And so that's why it's the request is being asked for so long. So it's um, that's what's been submitted to you um, so far. So you haven't taken any commentary about the merits of the appeal, um, but you've just um, made motions to continue. I have a question. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Go ahead. Thanks. Thanks, um, Kat. The Carolyn, that was helpful. Um, so I don't want to really get into, well, two things. I don't want to really get into the merits, but I just want to be assured on some level that if we do this postponement and we wait another however many months and however many months after that, if the mortgage company is equally problematic, um, is this ultimately going to resolve the case, do we think? Well, the issue is that there is not enough open space. Um, no, and I understand it. So and, well, this we reviewed the amount yes. of space. Yes, it it would resolve the um, issue about whether or not a building permit could be granted for the property for the expansion, the building expansion that's already underway, and so. Yes, that's the last remaining issue before a building permit can be obtained. So raise um, other separate unrelated issues right now, right? Later. Right, okay. right. The building department that's would all, have to review. All. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's right. all I, I wanted to know. The and land then, use or the zoning component is just about the open space. Okay, and then the only question I have, and Attorney McLaughlin, I know you've been moving mountains and doing what you can. Um, and I know this is not in your control, but it just, I just have to say this, okay? It's none of my business. I just wondered if this person could refinance and get into a bank instead of this mortgage company and, you know, facilitate expediting. I'm just throwing it out. It just seems ridiculous that the mortgage company is holding that up. I'd like to note that we have uh, attorney John McLaughlin 
on behalf of Richard Watling, if is that correct? That's cor that's correct. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add, as I said forth in my request, the neighbor next door has has agreed to pay his mortgage. No, no, no. For, I understand. No, I, yeah, I, yeah. I read it yeah. all. I've got it all. Yeah. I'm just saying. No, if sorry, he, yeah. if I don't he think gets out from else. under this mortgage company and gets into a refinances and gets into a bank, maybe it will go a little bit more quickly. That's all. Yes. I, my I, concern. Um, Thank you, um, attorney, is that uh, as we continue and continue, has there been any comment from um, the, the building commissioner or DPW or uh, any other parties regarding this? Not to me, no. Um, I can answer that. There hasn't been any comment to, uh, I mean, they're under the, un understanding that this is sort of in process so everything has stayed effectively um until this can get resolved if it can get resolved and so they're just waiting for the board and so typically when there's an enforcement action and the um, recipient of that action it ha is taking steps to correct that then the city sort of holds on enforcement but as it relates to department of public i mean you know, no more building can continue. They, mm -hmm. There's there are no permits ever taken for construction, and that piece is enforced and in and continues to be enforceable. Um, but the the order to remove is on hold. But there's no occupation of that part of no. the premises. No. There's no continued um, construction or movement right. towards in any in any way towards development. And absolutely nothing is happening with that. That's correct. Uh, I've told my client it's it's already sealed for the winter, uh, so he's not going to do anything. He's not using it, and he's not working on it. And uh, I've also copied Alan Seawald and everything I've given you, so everyone knows right. what. No, I saw there. that. Um, yep. and, and all the penalties have been paid, Carolyn. Yep. Um, I hadn't reviewed that, but I believe they were paid when um, when this was filed. Okay. Well, if the city doesn't have any particular objections, then, you know, I, I won't. What is the proposed date continuing to what what date? That is not um, definite. It just said July, I believe, of 2023. So you're you haven't set your meeting dates for July, but you know, the first Thursday is the sixth, which is the I mean, so the second Thursday is the 13th. And the fourth Thursday is the 27th. So it would be up to the board to determine right now <laughs> which meeting they would prefer, um, you know, in July, the 13th or the 27th. Plus we only have one meeting in July. Yep. So I have two questions to raise um, just before, and I may not be the voting member. I, I welcome, you know, Bob Riddle being the voting member on this. But um, one point is, regarding that scheduling the meeting i mean we you know we we as zoning board members do this freely and voluntarily and without compensation but i want to make sure since it's during vacation time that they have had proper time to actually fulfill that 12 month window with the bank and close on the transaction so that when we're called together to meet again it might actually be good use of our time. They might be ready for us. And I appreciate that Attorney McLaughlin is being as proactive as he can to have that meeting be as early out as possible. But I also want it to be realistic. Um, Are you thinking that, about August? Then maybe? I'm, I'm just questioning, like, realistically, if the bank is not going to make even begin to make an decision on the evaluation of that property until the end of June. And then we meet, you know, the third week of July, can we count on that as uh, is, is that a viable time? Because, you know, we're whatever scheduling vacations, but we always make it work. And I, I, we've moved many meetings now. And I just I want to make sure we're doing something that's reasonable. That's uh, I think that's a reasonable comment to make. Um, they, they're they basically telling the next door neighbor that they're not gonna get back to him till June. 
And then once we do that, we still have to put together a purchase and sale. Um, and yeah, I, I think that August might be more reasonable. It's possible. Might be more so the, the fourth meeting, the fourth week in August would be the 24th. Um, so that's the end of August. Does that make sense to the board? I'd like to set a date. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, August I, don't, 24th. I don't think the last week of August is uh, realistic for, um, excuse me, my camera cut out. Um, last week of August is normally problematic for scheduling because of school schedules and vacations, et cetera. Okay. We'll see, second and fourth. Oh, I see, the 24th. So it's not right. actually the last week of August. Right. It's that just that okay fourth. With me. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so August 24th is the date. And if you put it at 530, then if um, we know ahead of time, and we can always double book like we did for this agenda to at 530. Do we need a motion? Yes. Uh, yeah. And I actually have one other point I'd like to raise, and I don't know if it's like a second point. I'm trying to pull up Attorney McLaughlin's letter he sent today. Uh, it was actually sent on Tuesday, just so you know. Oh, it's dated uh, the 8th. Right. So uh, I was just going by the file date of the, uh, the date on the file of when I received it. Um, Uh, oh, sorry. Too many things. Too many windows open here. Um, okay. Believe I have it. Did you have a question about it? I did. I um have a question about, and I have it open page two. Um. Uh, the second paragraph, I believe, uh, mm -hmm. end of the first paragraph, yet in light of the fact that my client will A, waive any issues, and B, not to do any work on the new structural addition. Uh, this may be uh, unnecessary to say, but I would like to assure, and uh, Attorney McLaughlin suggested, like, alluded to this, to not do, I would prefer it to say, to not do any work or reside or use the structural addition. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that if you want to put that in as part of the continuance, that's fine. I mean, they don't have an occupancy permit, so you shouldn't right. be in there. But I would prefer to have that clarified. That That's fine. If you want to do the continuance based upon that condition and vote on it with that condition, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. right. Yeah. Would you like to frame a motion? Maureen, why don't you do it? So, um, are these two separate motions? One having to do with the change of date no. for the next hearing? It's just you can the wrap them in. Okay, I would propose that we change the wording to say. Well, you're not going to change the wording to the memo. You would make a right. motion to approve the continuation um, under the condition that the building um, not be, um, that construction remains halted and that no occupancy of the um, partially constructed, constructed structure is um, uh, occurs or something. <laughs> okay, so uh, let me let me try that. So I make a motion that we make a condition that between now and until the um, now and until the continuance is uh, until the um, real estate transfer is transacted that the uh, owner cannot do any work on the new structural addition as agreed on, and that there not be any uh, residential or other use of the structure until that point. Does that work? Well, the first part needs to be that we, we approve the motion for continuance. To the date and time certain. 
August 24th, 5.30 p.m. Okay, thank you. Until August 24th. What was that time? 5.30 p.m.? Until our meeting, 5.30 p.m. <laughs> All right. All right. A second? I think so. <laughs> There's a long motion there. Sorry. Do no, no, you... no, it's all right. I, I, think I, I think I second that. Do you think you do? I do. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we're going to uh, have a roll call. Those in favor? Uh, uh, Maureen Scanlon? No. Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And Sarah Northrup? Yes. Okay, so that's unanimous. They count. Um, there, I, I do want to say if there is any movement on the part of the current mortgage company or change over to a different bank that facilitates expediting this, feel free to come back before then. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Do we need to close that? We hadn't even opened that hearing. That was simply a discussion of the continuance. Um, we'll now open the hearing on application for a special permit by Chuck's Signs for a front wall sign larger than the allowed at 440, hmm? 440 Pleasant Street, Northampton, map 39A, uh, lot 25. Um, do we have someone here to speak on behalf of the applicant? If so, please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Eric Martins. I'm representing Chuck Sound Company. Uh, our address is 658 Fuller Road, Chickabee, Mass, 01020. Thank you, Eric. Would you like to present the application? And sure. I would uh, give you a special permit. Yeah, let me just uh, share my screen, if that's okay. Yeah, yes. let me just get that going. Um, sorry. I haven't clicked okay, it yet, so just let me know when you're ready. Okay, got it. Cool. You should be all set. All righty. Let me just, uh, okay. No, I have to change my preferences. Sorry. Uh... Okay, this is the former Hamden Zimmerman building. Um, looking to uh, replace the sign with one that is similarly a little bit bigger than allowed. <laughs> Normally. Let's try this one more time. I'm sorry, I can't figure this out. Uh, is there any way I can uh, upload it? By chance? Um, I can post this pictures um, from my end. If that, if you like that, if that works. Let's yeah, just I, didn't, I didn't expect uh, uh, to hit this hurdle. My computer is just not allowing me to share it. Okay, so. I also reviewed the oh, application, right. just for the record. Um, so. Mr. Barnes, we've seen the application and we've seen the photograph. Mm -hmm. So was there something in addition to that? Well, there we go. Carolyn got it up. Um, no, I, I don't think it's really anything. There's anything else in addition. Uh, I just think the customer wanted the sign to be able to fit within the the, the the blue paint. So it's kind of like a seamless fit. Um, there isn't any um, obstruction. The sign can be seen easily from the street. As far as I know, I would have to... Uh, open up the, the Google, like the street view for that. But well, as far seen. as I know, it seems pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Can you see what is up on the screen? Mr. I Martin? can, yes. Oh, okay, good. So there's there are no lights in that, right? Nope, it's uh, not illuminated. And I forget what the square footage is. It's 100 and something, 120? Uh, it says 132 square feet right, right there on the bottom. Okay, so it's 12 square feet over, right, Carolyn? Right. Okay. No, 32 square feet over. What did I say? 12. <laughs> Sorry. That's what I heard. Maybe you no, know, I'm sure that's what I said. It's been a long week. That's what I meant. Yes, 32 yeah. over. Mm -hmm. right. 
Um, and there are no other signs, right? This is it. This is the only. I believe. Uh, let me just. Or maybe uh, one by one. Right. There's a monument uh, sign there, but I I didn't I didn't do the survey for their job, so I just need to. I'll have to just check the sur the, the Google Map. If you guys don't mind. It looks like there's a monument sign right out front. Mm -hmm. that is, that's all I can tell. And that's uh, maybe like 100 feet to the right of where that sign is going to be located. Is this going to be painted directly on the building? Uh, well, it's it's going to be mounted uh, to the to the wall. It's, it's going to be uh, it, it's a flat. It's, it's called a belt sign. Mm hmm. Um, but it'll, yeah, it'll just be mounted to the shape. The, and, uh, yeah, the shape within the, uh, the blue. And can you give us an explanation why it needs to be as large as you're asking for it to be? Uh, well, it really just, the customer wants it to, to fit within the, the opening in the blue paint. And that's, I don't think it gets any more complicated than that. It, it would just make more sense to have the sign fit within that shape. So it's kind of like a seamless uh, presentation. Now, the previous sign, did it, it filled that, didn't it? I would imagine uh, my existing oh. proof that I, there's no sign there now. So I'm not sure what was there. Right. Got it. I think it previously did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it, it, I would assume. And but, when was that removed? That wasn't removed by us, so I, I'm not sure when that came down. But Carolyn, there's no objection by anybody? Uh, there are no comments. DPW didn't have any comments. I haven't received any public um, comments on this application, no. Okay. So um, the standard is that um, we can allow issue a special permit uh, mm -hmm. if the sign is located only where it would otherwise be permitted. The Board of Appeals determines that the architecture of the building location or land or nature of the use is such that additional sign or larger sign would not detract from the character of the neighborhood and should be permitted in the public interest. Additional mm -hmm. ground signs would only be approved if there was exceptional circumstances. The ground sign is not uh, in question here. And the, um, and we would be specifying in the permit, the exact sign that's permitted with its size and location, et cetera. Okay. Um, so what's uh, presumably since uh, what was there was prior to uh, what was uh, pre-existing and of approximately that size, um, we're essentially, uh, you're essentially just replacing a sign. Yes. Um, requiring a special permit. Um, do we have any uh, questions from the board? Not for me. I have a comment, but maybe we save it for discussion. Um, it's it's, it's, it's like simply about it's sim simply about lighting, because I can I can respect the efficiency of simply using the existing space to occupy the new sign. And it's set back from the road enough that it's not a huge distraction or intrusion. But were it to be lit, that might change things. And I would want to make sure we know we're not giving them permission to light the sign, not mm. that they've requested that. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely understood. It's a daytime business. You know. If if any lighting were to be added later on, that would be up to the the whim of the the owner. So no. because that's an option and it's no. allowed by zoning. Well, I'm saying they could try, but they wouldn't succeed. That's all I was saying. 
the board would absolutely should if the board is concerned about future lighting can absolutely put a condition in this permit because they're asking yeah. for a bigger sign that the there not be that this sign not be lit because okay. there's no um trigger for it to come back to the board necessarily if in five years mm. someone says oh i'm just going to install a little goosenecks over this right so if if that's not an issue for the board i mean if that is an issue for the board i would encourage you to put that in as a condition okay. of granting this permit um <laughs> I don't know that it would, well, do we want to close the public hearing? Is there anything else that um, you wanted to add or anybody else wanted to add on this? Mr. Well, I want to, I want to open it up for public. If, right, is there anyone here is. from the public that would want to uh, make a comment on this application uh, in favor of, uh, if so, please state your name and address. I don't well. see any raised hands. Okay. Anyone? Uh, Likewise, opposed to this application. Acknowledging no raised hands at this time. I move uh, that we close the public. If we have enough information, you can make a motion. Move that we close the public hearing. Second. Second. Well, second. Roll call. Uh, Elizabeth Silver. Yes. Uh, Maureen Scanlon. Yes. And Sarah Northup. Yes. Thank you, folks. We've, so we've closed the public hearing on this. We will continue our meeting and discuss the application. Um, I, I, in response to Maureen's question, I appreciate the question, Maureen. Um, and and it and I had asked about that. Uh, I, in thinking about this, I don't mind if there are some lights in the future during business hours, I don't think we should preclude any lights. I think that would be a precedent that we haven't typically followed mm -hmm. with businesses. So I think it would be particularly harsh and punitive to put in a condition that they could never have any lights at all. Um, so what I would um, perhaps suggest is that if they are gonna do any lighting in the future, and we can put, if, if we wanna put an LED or whatever we wanna kind of lights we wanna condition, that they be allowed during business hours. That they be come back during... for that? That they ask the building no. commissioner for that? I don't think so. Not if not if we're limiting it to a kind of lighting within a certain restricted time frame. I don't think mm -hmm. they should have to. Come that back. would otherwise be permitted. Right. That seems appropriate. No. Any problems with that, Carolyn? No, I don't know. That, okay. I mean, that seems reasonable. <laughs> Okay. Right. You want to frame a motion? Do, well, I guess the question before we do a motion is, do we want to dictate the type of lighting that could happen um, if we're actually even allowed to do that, which I think we are? Mm. Um, you could. Um, there's a whole, there are a range of different types of lighting um, allowed by right in the zoning. So if the issue is more that it's only on during business hours, uh, obviously you've done that on many, many permits, um, as opposed to the type of lighting in the event that technology changes by the time <laughs> some, you know, an, an interested applicant comes forward with lighting. Um, I might encourage you just to focus on the business hours as opposed to the type of light. Okay, that's fine. That makes sense. And I, you know, in this particular case, I know this building and there are no windows facing the street. So I think lighting is probably appropriate anyway, um, or at least to allow them to do that. So um, I guess I would move that we approve the request for the signage at the size requested. Um, and that in the and that in the future, should they want to um, include lights, that they be allowed to do so between the opening and an hour after close of business. Thank you. Second. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, noted that has well, no, I thought we were going to include some stipulation about the type of lighting, but what you're saying is that would happen separately. The lighting ordinance would dictate the type of lighting, I believe, 
unless we have okay so within Lumen, lumens restrictions okay oh, so yes right. second i mean we can still have discussion if you want that doesn't preclude no i'm good with that anything else okay mm -hmm. yeah are you um, ready for a roll call yes roll call okay. please yep. elizabeth silver yes maureen scanlon yes and sarah northrop yes I would note that we still have uh, our other board member on the line available. Thank you. Yes. That motion is passed. Um, let's see. Now we are moving on. We'll now open the public hearing on the appeal by Patrick Melnick of the Building Commissioner's Determination regarding a building lot at Grove Avenue, Leeds, map ID 5-12. This is, uh, this is, we've seen this, uh, these plans in this lot before. So um, let's see, I think Sarah, uh, can we I'd appreciate- Can we just what? determine who's hearing this one on the board? I mean, it sure. won't be a discussion, but just in terms of letting, you know, our knowing this ahead of time. Sure. Between the two alternates, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, I see we have Maureen Scallon and Bob Riddle available. Is uh, um, have uh, both of you been on previous hearings of this matter? Recall? Yes, but I would I would welcome Bob stepping in, like taking taking the role on this one. So um, just to, like to clarify for everyone in the public, so associate members can um, can vote and um, discuss, but only one associate member would only one associate member's vote would count. And uh, Maureen Scanlon and Bob Riddle are two associate members. So although both can participate, only one um, vote would be counted. So if you're suggesting Bob Riddle be the um, tally on this, then um, I'll note that in the minutes. Yes, well, I request that I appreciate his seniority. Um, well, do we have his, uh, his concurrence? I don't, I see he's still muted. Bob, are you available? Well, he might be having trouble with the line. So. Um, oh, he just oh, unmuted. There we go. Great. Bob, are you available? I can't hear him. Nope. <clears throat> nope. Still can't hear you. Nope. Maybe he'll try again. Okay. We should uh uh we should resolve this before we continue. Hey, Bob. Okay, we're not, I guess we're not going to be able to hear you. Thanks for trying. <laughs> Look forward to talking to you soon, hearing you soon. Um, so uh, we're going to continue with uh, Maureen Scallon um, as the associate voting this evening on this particular hearing that we have opened. Um, I, I think I'd appreciate a, a little summary by staff. There's been a lot of uh, documents communication, which we have reviewed, and again, in the last few days. Yep. Carolyn? Sure. So um, just to clarify, you know, this is a brand new hearing, so newly advertised um, and new Thank notice you. sent to abutters. However, it is um, also an appeal that... Um, is very similar to the appeal that you all heard back in June, uh, May and June of 2021. Um, the board, uh, there was a request for an appeal of the building commissioner's determination at that time that the uh, parcel in question um, was not buildable because it lacked frontage. Um, that is currently on, um, that was appeal, your decision to uphold to the building commissioner's determination was appealed at that time and that's making its way through the courts. There's been no final decision about that appeal. In the intervening months, the um, applicant 
asked for official separate access from Department of Public Works to the property. Department of Public Works granted access, but clearly stated that that grant of access was not in any way a determination about whether the building lot was a legal building lot and could had frontage. Um, so that status hasn't changed at all, but the applicant um, filed again for a building permit, sort of in the same <laughs> premise, but now using the driveway as now they have access. So you, I mean, the issues from the city's perspective are, is that um, the planning board can make a determination about whether there's adequate access and whether or not um, the, it meets the standards for frontage in that regard, um, as opposed to the zoning board. And um, so we have the status now still, we're waiting for the court's determination about this and it's being presented again in front of you. Thank you. Carolyn, I have a question. Um, has there been any change in any conditions between the, I think it's June, 2021 and now that would, where there's still an unresolved court hearing, is there any anything new for us to hear? Um, no, I mean, the applicant has said that because they have a driveway, now they've resolved the issues, but that doesn't resolve the, the frontage issue and the city's position remains the same relative to that. And as we say, the city's position that includes the uh, building commissioner and the DPW. <gasps> Um, correct. Um, and then also I'd like to just clarify for everyone that this is an appeal of the building commissioner's determination about the whether or not this is a, a building lot. And so it requires a unanimous decision um, to overturn a decision made by the building commissioner. Um, one more uh, uh, technical question um, before we uh, decide for proceeding is, um, has so is there there's been an additional application for a building permit um right so this is a uh, a new a new started addition started the process essentially over because another gotcha. building permit application was submitted which was then denied no um reason, again yes. because of the status hadn't changed and we were waiting for the court's decision and so then okay. that second or new application has been appealed and that's what's in front of you now all right thank you um so we have um we have someone here from the applicant who will be speaking for the applicant please state your name and address can i make a request sarah uh yes um it, having been through this once before at lengthy hearings and the issue previously is still undetermined um i would appreciate any um, uh, arguments that's put before us to be completely new, unrelated to the past that's still pending and uh, address any reasons why we should be considering this separate and apart and differently from anything in the past. Is that a reasonable request, Chair, today? Um, I believe so. We don't, we don't wanna necessarily rehash, although some of their points will be the same. We are talking about a new application based on what they say is a new condition of the parcel. So does the applicant want to speak and tell us what's different about this application? Mr. Melnick, I think uh, you want to unmute yourself. I don't think we can unmute you or you. Can't hear you. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Hello? Yes, yes. I hear you okay. now. Great. Uh, my name is Pat Melnick, and I'm a resident of uh, Leeds, uh, 306 Chestfield Road, and I'm the current trustee of the Beaver Brook Army Trust. Uh, but I'm also. Uh, the uh, person who created the Beaverbrook subdivision development up on the hill. And this piece of land we're talking about is a 
leftover piece from the uh, uh, subdivision, or not subdivision, it was actually a cluster uh, condominium that was created. And it was not intended to be <laughs> built upon or thought to be built upon unless somebody decided to do a uh, subdivision up the uh, Grove Avenue to create probably six building lots. There's several other lots besides myself that abut this roadway, uh, the McCarthy's, yeah. the uh, Chevrette, and uh, now the bookbinder has bought property. Uh, so there's several other people involved in the frontage along that road that could, re could creatively be built to make six or more houses is something that would take a subdivision approval. I'm not seeking that at all. As a matter of fact, I don't think that would be appropriate. I'm seeking for a single building lot that would basically cut out the right of anybody to build other lots along that road. It would basically seal the deal and that'd be the end of it. So the only reason I, I started this is Mr. Mata came because they changed the zoning law a couple of years ago to allow 50 feet of frontage instead of 75 in the URA district. And Mr. Mata came before you, as you know, and you denied him. And I, I think there were some points in your original decision that were either unclear or an error, and I'd like to address them. Uh, first of all, the land that we're talking about is the bike path, the end of the, uh, the existing bike path. And if, I don't know if it was presented at the last hearing or not, but that land was donated uh, to the city by my brother-in-law, Jack Hanley, in 1990, uh, 2007 with the express condition, which the city agreed to, that he'd be allowed to use that for vehicular access to access a residential property. The city agreed to that. This, this is not new news. This was on the table at the beginning. Uh, uh, Carolyn and uh, Wayne were involved when this was uh, donated to the city, and they accepted it with that condition. There wasn't any argument about it at all. Well, there was an argument at one point, though, about where Grove Avenue ended, and that was another lawsuit that I had to file with, uh, against the city because the city was always claiming that Grove Avenue did not abut the Beaverbrook property. Well, we knew it did because uh, the historical records and all the uh, evidence was that the road came all the way to the end of the uh, uh, to the end of the road to abut the property. Judge Roop in 2011, and this is important, she made a judgment determining that Grove Avenue is a public way for its entire length, not partly, entire length, to the point where it abuts the property known by the Beaverbrook Nominee Trust. The city didn't like it at the time, but they accepted it because the judge ruled that way. And they seem to want to relitigate re that. They have this issue that uh, there's 36 feet or some number of feet that doesn't you know, conform to the city standards or whatever. But they, 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 they seem to, to think that they can relitigate the issue that was decided by the judge in 2011, and they, I don't believe they can. So the, 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 the real issue is, you know, what is, what is the frontage of this lot? Well, a lot line front is the part of the dividing line of the lot from the street right of way. Well, the only dividing line between this lot and the street right of way is at the end, which is the 50 feet of frontage at the end of the street. And frontage is defined as the, uh, the length of the front lot line, which we know is the end of the street, that abuts a public way. Well, the judge ruled it's a public way. The front line abuts that, that line, and it, it conforms to the definition of the zoning, notwithstanding whatever the, the city may want to conjure up. <clears throat> but anyhow, your, your decision back in uh, uh, you know, uh, 2021, you know, I thought had some errors, and, and it wasn't just based upon the frontage issue. Your first finding was that adequate access for emergency vehicles would only be on a 10 foot wide bicycle path, which is the only improved portion of the way the abuts the public way. So- Mr. You, Melnick, can I just stop you for a second, yeah. there, please? Yeah. Are these the same arguments that you have in the court case that are going now? No, because we've, we've, res we've corrected the problem you found back in 2001. You said there wasn't an ac adequate access for, for a, a, a for emergency vehicles. Well, I've corrected that. I got to the BT DPW. I got a permit. The roadway has been widened to 15 feet. The DPW has accepted that. They said it conforms to their standards. They've accepted the way they designed it. They told me to lay it out that way. We built it that way. And uh, Donna Lascoria has approved of it. It's a, it, it. It meets their requirements. And any vehicle can get in there now. Any size vehicle can get in there now. Because in addition drive, to making, you, so you're saying that it's the only difference is a driveway, right? No, the, in, in the interior of the lot has been widened, so an emergency vehicles can turn around. A DPW plow can go in there, pull straight in, back around, and pull straight out. It's so you've a done more building, building to the lot than the driveway. Pardon me. 
You've done more building to the lot than the driveway without going to the planning board? The no. lot, yeah, we have a right to use the lot. We have built a driveway right into the lot. No, no, no I'm not talking about the driveway. I know you have permission for the driveway, but there were very clear um, limitations on what that means when that permission was granted. So no, my no. question is, have you been doing other building besides the driveway that hasn't been um, approved by the planning board as is required? or that's in front of the, the superior court in the case that's still pending? The, the, the planning board's problem was they didn't have access for public vehicles. Uh, Did, for no, no, you're not answering my question. I, I, I have Is a right. Is there any building going on in the in There's the no lot. building going on. There's been grading going on and opening up the lot so vehicular vehicles can turn around ad adequately and, and properly. That doesn't require- Have you created more than the driveway that you were given permission for? Yes, but uh, with Donna Lascoria and I talked it over and I told her what I was doing and she approved it. So it's not anything new. She approved the whole thing. When the, when the job was done, she looked at it. She thought it was great. And that was the end of it. I had uh, Rick Parasoliti out there looking at the trees and we you know, worked around the trees and we uh, opened it up so that it's usable and, and turnable. So there's a change in the condition a lot. And it, it's, it's, have you it's been to now, the planning board? Have you been to the planning board as you've been advised to uh, both this time and the prior time? The planning board doesn't have to give me permission to make access to my lot. I have a right no, no, to, no, to build on your lot. I'm not building it. I don't. I can't build it until I get a building permit. I'm not sure what you're asking, but I can certainly can grade you can't it. Get a building permit, trees. so you got uh, the, There's no. Let's, there's let's no let him finish about his, uh... me violating zoning. The building inspector has never been out there to tell me I violated zoning, and I haven't. It. It's not uh, not required. You know, if you think I don't have a right to make my lot accessible so I can drive into it, turn around, and turn out. That's not true. I have a driveway permit. The DPW gave me the right to get into the lot. I have a right to go in there and pull into it, back out and pull back out. There's no question about that. I don't know why you're raising that. That's not what the issue is here today. Well, what I'm raising is whether or not what you're raising here is still in front of the court. No, it's gonna be, if you, if you deny it, I assume you're gonna deny it. It's gonna be before the court. The court will then decide whether or not the driveway I have meets the requirements to like emergency, emergency vehicles to get in Turn around and get out. And it's going to be, and, and you should take a look at it. It's very obvious that emergency vehicles can now access the lot. This is the best access of any of the houses in the whole street have. The other streets or the other driveways there are only uh, eight or 10 feet wide. This one is 15 feet wide. It is okay, a much better but, situation but, but, than the other. And I understand, um, Chair, what you're saying, but I just want to make this point clear. As I understand the permission you had for a parking lot, it explicitly says that nothing in this permit shall be construed as an admission or otherwise as evidence of adequate frontage under the Northampton zoning ordinance. And if you're coming here today saying that you have sufficient frontage because of the, of the driveway, I, 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 is that what you're trying to argue? No, I told you the frontage issue is by definition. The judge ruled that the right, that the street that's goes before to the lot. And the front of the lot is at the point where it connects with my lot. The issue I'm talking about- That's is, before nope. the court though, right? The frontage issue. And that was our denial before the frontage issue. It wasn't just the front. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Your first ruling was there was not adequate access. That's what you draw, That's what you determined. So number one, the applicant does not have adequate access for emergency vehicles. There were There's several findings in our decision. You made a decision based upon well, access. So- um, you're explaining explain that you have been uh, correcting the access issue, and yes. there are uh, there were some other issues that you have been working on. Yes, that's what I'm trying to tell you. The ac ac access issue, you I think, has been resolved. Okay, so that that was number one. Number two, you said that the city, uh, the fact that the city consistently did not interpret frontage to, to include the measurement from long from the end of a way. Well, I looked up and I think I gave you copies of many of the lots in the city that have houses at the end of ways. A lot of these were built in rezoning, and but there are only three lots in the city left that are at the end of a street where they haven't built a house yet. But there's been no nobody, as far as I know, except myself, that's ever asked the city to use the end of the way as frontage. So you're finding the fact that the city consistently did not interpret frontage to include the end of the way, that's completely 
That's completely conjecture. That's not the case. Nobody has ever asked for it before. This is the first time. So your finding there, I don't think was correct. Is there I, a I've showed you these other cases where there are lots at the and houses at the end of streets that have been built many times. In addition to that, of course, there's cul-de-sacs where there's houses at the end of the streets that are approved. And, you know, it's not a, it's not a novel issue. Okay, so uh, the next thing, and then you upon the following, you've said that uh, number one, the, uh, the, 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 the public street ends at, number two, you said the public street ends 37 feet, feet south of the applicant's locus. So I just, just told you, Judge Roop said that's not true. That's a false statement. The street ends at our lot line, not 37 feet from it. It's the public street is at the lot line, not 37 feet from it. And again, you say in number three, the city consistently interprets frontage being measured on the way and not the butt end of a street. That's not true. There's not a single case you can show me where the city has ever said to somebody at the end of a street, you can't use the frontage at the end of the street. It doesn't, it, it's not there. It's not in the zoning ordinance. And this was just a completely random conjecture that the zoning board made. It's not, it's not factually accurate and it's just simply wrong. Uh, and then you cited some cases. Well, the Emory Crawley case, you know, has nothing that you did in number four has nothing to do with the uh, frontage issue that had an issue to do with uh, the ownership of the uh, derelict fee statute that had nothing to do with frontage. As a matter of fact, in 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 uh, 2000 and since you made your decision in 2021, the courts have recently ruled that the frontage on the end of a street can be used to calculate frontage for zoning. So your statement that it can't be is, is just not true. There's a recent case that I can give you the site for that says that's that's inaccurate. So I, I don't think I'm going to persuade you, obviously, because you've, you've already made up your mind. But the I'll tell you what the case is that, just for the record, it's Perry against the Zoning Board of Appeals of Hall. It's 100 Mass Appellate Court 19. And it was decided in March of 21. And they basically said, not only can you use the end of the street as a frontage, but you can wrap the frontage around the end of the street to your other lot line to make frontage if necessary to make the required frontage. Thank you. We will probably, at least a couple of us are probably going to read that. Okay. Thank well, that's you. That's great. Um, uh, Mr. Melnick, well, is there uh, some other uh, new additional information for this? I, we have a lot of uh, a lot of folks here. and. Um, should open it up for um, the the hearing. No, I can I could uh, I, I can leave it there. I can I can tell you we there are other there, there's definitely going to be a house there someday. Amy Bookbinder has bought the lot next beyond me, and her mother and her you know her, her daughter are going to definitely build a lot there. And if I sold them my lot, they'd have a right to do it without any permits because they could do the two lot thing from Amy Bookbinder's uh, property. So there's there's got to be houses there, you know. It's it's just a question of whether it's going to be one house or many houses. Thank you. Um, any questions from the board this time? We open it up. No. no. Okay. Um, so I see we have a lot of folks here from the public. It is a public hearing. Um, we'll open it up for uh, people to speak. We'll start with people to speak in favor of this application. Um, and we're going to try to keep it relatively um, you know, uh, reasonable, and we don't want to hear repetitive. So uh, if you uh, state what your, uh, your, your point is, try to keep it concise, and then um, it will be on the record. And uh, if you hear somebody stating your point, um, you can uh, consider it heard. And you um, can, Elizabeth. Um, and you can know that we have read every single letter that you have submitted both in the prior hearing and in the yes. current hearing. Yes. So please do not repeat your letters, read your letters, summarize your letters. We have read them all. If you have something new to say and make it brief, that's fine. I would also note that it is now 628 and uh, we will probably take our public comment until 7 p.m. and no longer. Does that sound reasonable, folks, my board members? Carolyn? That may not give us time to decide. 
right? right. We might it might require a continuation. And in fact, mm -hmm. the fact that this is in front of the court at this time, uh, perhaps we should consider a continuation anyway. Elizabeth, do you have a thought on that? Yes, I do. Um, I don't. I, I I think we can hear from people. I don't think we need to spend a half an hour hearing from people. I think we have the exact same issue before us that we had before, and that the um, the the driveway does not change anything about what the definition of frontage is that the city requires, and that it doesn't exist. So um, at this point, I can tell you before hearing from all you people that I think we should take a vote today. I don't think there's anything different. I don't think we need to continue this. I think we can just make a decision and um, Mr. Melnick can add this to his court case if he'd like to. In either direction. Uh, uh, Carolyn, do you have any input on just procedural issues relating to this? Um, uh, no, not procedural issues. I mean, you take public comment and determine which path you would like to take. I think, um, you know, these, as I had said this at the outset, these are the same issues that are before the court. Um, and so I think the court is obviously going to evaluate the cases that Mr. Melnick has um, um, submitted to you all tonight. Hmm. Um, and of course, you know, none of, and um, so procedurally, no, I just leave it at that. Okay. Okay. And frontage issues are addressed. If the questions about frontage or change in frontage um, requirements, that's addressed by the planning board, not by us, right? Correct. So okay. if, if right. there's an argument that there is frontage and adequate frontage, the planning board can make that determination. And we have presented that all along to the applicant. And, you know, he's suggested that at some point there will be a house there. And that is certainly something the planning board could consider right. um, okay. under the rules yeah. of procedure for filing for the for that. And while there is a pending court case on this, we um, may decide as a board that this is not an appropriate timing for us to weigh in on this while there is still an open court case pending. Right, that's, that's up to you. To decide. To... Okay, okay, thank you for the clarification. Okay, so. I would also uh, note that um, the, uh, the fact that's going on concurrently uh, is, is uh, would certainly court would take precedent and uh, as the zoning board we are really enforcement uh, similar to the building inspector we don't um, uh, we don't get into the sort of design questions that um, and uh, opinions that the planning board gets into um, it's, a, it's a different sort of jurisdiction our what we can decide uh, regardless of uh, what's happened in the past. We are simply enforcing what, what we have in front of us. Uh, so I'm now going to open it up uh, for public comment. And uh, I saw a hand earlier. I see Brad Carmody. Carmody? Yeah. Uh, just to not rehash anything, I won't go over <clears throat> any of the oppositions that you've gotten in writing and from me and many other people previously. Thank but you. I do have a question. Is there is there potentially a zoning issue uh, or a way to deny this, uh, given that it is a bike path? Um, because it would impinge on the bike path, and and I know there's an issue with the roadway, and the, it seems to me that the bike path uh, uh, is a public way and and, and satisfies that, uh, but could certainly uh, be a problem for any frontage that would go across it. Uh, so, that's my that's my question. That is certainly complex, <laughs> certainly because uh, it was Mr. Melnick's um, folks that uh, helped that happen with the planning department that it exists there. Uh, I see a hand, uh, Mr. Sparkle. 
Yes, good evening. Thank you. And thank you for taking the time to read all of those letters that have come in. I, oh, I'm Bucky Sparkle. I'm at 87 Grove Avenue. I am one of the direct letters to the property in question. Um, I won't rehash anything related to frontage. Uh, I do want to bring up a couple of points. As a civil engineer, I would be quite surprised that anyone from the fire department or police department emergency services would consider a narrow driveway as adequate access, at least at the level necessary to create uh, a new lot. Uh, and I would very much appreciate hearing uh, the opinion of those organizations uh, to see if, it, if it's helpful for their needs. Uh, there is one 15 foot wide and then some driveway, or the drive's 15 uh, apron, and that's mine. Uh, vehicles turn around at the end of my driveway several times a day, including emergency service vehicles. Um, so there, there's no boon added by the additional uh, driveway that is now on Mr. Melnick's property. Um, and um, also, well, that's a frontage issue. So I'm gonna let that one lie down too. Thank you. Um, there was comment about, uh, this will be my last point, um, and I'm not sure if she's here to speak, but I know both Amy and Rose uh, Bookbinder, my neighbor, and uh, in speaking with her myself, uh, the, the purpose of them acquiring the land back there uh, is to stop further development. In fact, myself and several other people are really hoping that we can eventually acquire that land and add it to the conservation property to benefit the residents mm -hmm. and the, the hundreds of people who mm -hmm. come through there on a weekly basis. So um, I will leave my comments there and uh, let the proceedings continue. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. I see Rose Bookbinder has a hand up. Yeah, I, I just wanted to, I wasn't planning on saying anything because I've spoken before, but just because my name was raised, my husband and I did purchase a piece of a small piece of property on the other side of Mr. Melnick's property at the cost of an unbuildable lot because that's what the owner recognized that the lot was unbuildable with the intention of not building. So I just wanted to clarify that since it was brought up that that was done. So we're, we're not Thank planning you. building on that lot. Thank you. Keeping an eye out for other hands. Anyone uh, from the public would like to speak in support of Mr. Melnick's applicate appeal? I see many names that we have received letters from. So thank you Good for that. Point. And thank you for uh, doing your part to share your thoughts and not just duplicate what you said in your letters. <laughs> All right. So I'd move to close the public hearing. I'll second. Any discussion? Thank you, a roll call. Carolyn is muted. Um, there we go. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And Sarah Northrup? Yes. Thank you. So thanks, folks, for, for coming. We have uh, closed the public hearing. We will continue our public meeting, the discussion, and if we can come to some sort of decision this evening, we will. Um, any discussion amongst the board? I see no new points to discuss. Mm. No. All right. Um, let's see. Bob Riddle, I can't uh, perhaps get something to say. Can you hear me? Ah, uh, yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Do you have any thoughts, opinions really? on this? Um, no, I think everyone's um, comments have been absolutely pertinent to the issue and uh, I have nothing at all to add. I agree with the, with the idea of letting this play out in the court where it is now and uh, that's it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right, I would then make a motion. Uh, did it, Sarah, did you have anything you wanted to add at this point? Um, well, I, I, yes, just that, um, you know, as I said, as you know, as the Zoning Board of Appeals, we are really um, about uh, enforcement and is it appropriate to 
um, uh, to uh, overrule the building commissioner's opinion on this. Uh, uh, and um, there is a piece of this that does, um, that bothers me that has to do with, you know, the history of the property and the, um, and the, um, uh, you know, putting in the bike path and then saying, oh, then you can't use the land. So there's a whole piece of that that does bother me. Um, negotiating good faith over decades. Um, at the same time, uh, I have, since I've been on the board um, to address one point that was made, we have denied permits for um, lots that had only frontage on a dead end um, on the end of a, so, um, so in any case, I think it's uh, pretty clear. I like that. I do think it's more appropriate to let it play out in the court. I don't want to then have it uh, be in conflict with that. Carolyn. Um, yeah, I just I want to clarify the point that Mr. Melnick made um, that may be a little um, confusing is to note that absolutely when the um, easement was offered to the city it was offered with the um, provision that the owner continued to be able to access the, his property with um, through means of you know vehicular access. That is um, completely understood by the city. There was no issue with that. Many times people need to access their property with vehicles. That's a very different scenario from um, creating a building lot from access. And then, so if someone then comes back later and wants to build, uh, create a building lot using the same access that is also for the purposes of a bike path, that's the point at which then the planning board would evaluate the project and determine whether there's safe and adequate access for the functioning of both those things. And, and at that point, a determination or maybe the design would be accommodated to create enough safety so there's separation between those two uses. So it's not that the city is saying, that the Melnicks and the property owners cannot access their property um, over that same bike path, but it's a different equation from whether or not there's legal frontage and a legal building lot. The question before us being about the frontage of the building lot, which is playing out in the court. Yeah. Right. So can I ask- um, Of whom? Uh, uh, I Potentially Carolyn. Uh, probably Carolyn, but it, when, it, because I feel strongly that we should see how the court decides on this, but based on what we uh, move forward with as a, a decision tonight, if the court favors one way or the other, is there, is there, what will happen? Will it come back to us if the court favors um, in support of Mr. Melnick's, um, you know, question about what qualifies as frontage, does what we weigh in on tonight, what we move on tonight, um, should we think about the wording in terms of how this will weigh in? Should we make our decision independent of that? And because uh, that's my hunch, is that we should make our decision independent of what may come out of the court finding independent in that somewhat specific because i would be as uh as uh concise as possible and short right brief right okay without yeah. i mean your decision tonight is whether or not to uphold the building commissioner's determination that this is not a building lot and that is based on the fact that nothing has changed that, that the applicant hasn't gone to the planning board for approval um, through the subdivision process, which is, ident is one path that they could go through. And so your focus is, did the building commissioner make the appropriate determination? And um, you can um, okay. vote on that yeah. and also note that do you think that part of that is because nothing has changed since the previous time and no additional action as required in the code has taken place. But so procedurally what would happen is 
you know, potentially the appellant would then appeal your decision and it would probably get merged with the court's decision. And then the court will determine, does it remand it back to the zoning board or does it say, go to the planning board? That's where your relief is. We don't know. So okay. it's, it's hard to know have, what they're just, so you'll yeah. just, it'll play out and we'll tell you what the court says. Have, <laughs> thank you. So back All to right. Elizabeth. Um, okay, so um, I move that we uphold the building commissioner's determination to deny this application. Do I need to be more, for the, uh, do I need to be more detailed than that? I hope not. Okay, good. I'd rather not personally. I'll second, second that. I'll second that. Roll call. Uh, Maureen Scanlon? Yes. Elizabeth Silver? Yes. And Sarah Northrop? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Uh, Thank you. All right. So um, we have uh, a decision on that do we have uh i don't think we have any meeting minutes to review all right i do not have them do we have another meeting scheduled that you know of for sure carolyn um i do no we don't the next possible meeting would be january 12th mm -hmm. and so i'll probably know next week if if you'll have a meeting on the 12th okay that sounds good all right thank you Thank you all. Thanks, Sarah. Good meeting. Uh, motion yeah. to close the meeting. I'll move to close the meeting. Make a motion. We close the meeting. <laughs> all right. So I'll hey, put Bob. Bob a second. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> Roll call. <laughs> Maureen Scanlon. Yes. Um, Bob Riddle. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Elizabeth Silver. I think Sarah is the only other person. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm a definite yes. yes. And Sarah, how about yes. four? It's okay. That's fine. Thank you. All right. And uh, the meeting and is closed just, and we'll stop and you recording. You have a little break before going.